Hello, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. It's Rich Hobbs here from the Fancast. No, no, little Dan here for the preview show, so you stuck with me. Um, I am joined by Ed and Josh. Um, boys, how are you both? All good, all good. Looking forward to this. I was going to say, like, honestly, this is this is somewhat got me through today, and it's kind of really geared me up for the weekend. All of a sudden, I've sort of forgot. I, actually, this is a big game for these teams, and we're also joined um, from a forest perspective. We've got Dave Asprey uh, joining us today. Dave, Dave, how's it going? Uh, lovely lads. Uh, well, as I said to before we came on here, I'll let you know at about half five on Saturday afternoon. <laughs> but I'm, I'm I'm good, not too bad. It's uh, it's an honour to be on. Thank you for inviting me. Little Dan never got round to inviting me, so that's nice. So uh, yeah, it's good to be here. It's going to be an interesting game, I think. And uh, yeah, happy to be able to discuss it with three top lads. Yeah, it's, I'm I'm really excited um, for today's show because there's lots of stuff that's been happening um, around the league, um, and particularly, I guess, points deduction is kind of top of the menu. It, it, it seems to be the latest fad in football. We've gone from you know cutting um, you know holes in socks, mini shin pads, and now on points deductions. I've, it's just it's trends isn't it dave it's just trends right, it is, um, mate. <laughs> I, I guess um yeah um everton were deducted two further points for this um for breaking the psr property sustainability regulations i know it's something i guess that is impacting forest to a degree um in terms of a the deduction that you've gone through but also obviously with the league table at the moment um, and impacting, you know, the relegation zone. I mean, what are your kind of thoughts around it? I mean, it, it's hard to get into the nitty gritties of finance unless you know you're a, yeah. a, other finance ill. But how's it sort of sitting with yourself at the moment? Well, well, I'm not good with finance because I've got all my money down the back of the sofa here. You know, when you get to my age, that's where you put it. You don't put it in a bank. So I'm not the guy to talk to about finance. With regard to the situation, we did wrong. We were. Uh, cooperative and transparent to the investigation. Um, we were allowed so much of a loss. We went beyond that by 34.5 million. It wasn't like a tenner or a fiver. So it is what it is. Um, there's an appeal going on. Um, I, I personally don't. I, um, for your lads, for you lads, information. My, I was always resigned to the fact that it was going to be six. I don't know why. Mm. I just, it, it was just an arbor, arbitrary figure plucked from the ether it'll be six um which i mean they came at us for eight insolvency is nine but they came at us for eight which seemed a bit draconian uh it would have been six uh, but forest complied with everything they they almost said look yeah bang to rights here have a look thank you very much nottingham forest we will we'll we'll take some off you but it won't be as much as you thought now we're appealing which kind of almost says well actually you know, we we complied, but now we're not happy, even though we complied, which makes it, it, it confuses the issue. It muddies the water and it makes me despair more that we're talking about money. Yeah, we, yeah, we broke the rules, you know, the, the four points. I mean, the thing is with the four points, we we got them back in the games against Palace and Fulham. But in a way, we lost them because we've like drawn twice with Luton. We, you know. Uh, we drew with Burnley, so we actually lost six points that we should have had if we if we'd been you know up on our metal. So it, it's uh, it's all very tiresome. I think I think I mean it's tiresome for us. It, it, for me, I'm old school. It, to me, for my club to be the one with that tarnishment against us, it, I find it embarrassing. It's not a good look for my club. Um, but I think I, I don't think it's a good look for the for the for the game itself and for the league when we're discussing what going on off the field more than what what goes on on that beautiful green grass that we all play on you know so i i i'm i kind of you know what's happened to us has happened we've got to deal with that the best we can but it just makes me sad for the game as a whole really uh, yeah um, to be honest i was gonna say i find it really interesting how you know two teams have been courts probably the wrong but it, it, you know it, you can't well, get away with yeah. it, and you know if, if you get away with it, then you're doing something even more fraudulent, aren't you? To a degree, um, mm. but yeah, 
be interested to sort of see if any more teams kind of get caught up, Ed. I mean, obviously, the other breaking news today is that Sheffield United are going to face a points deduction. Mm, and mm. I was going to say, whenever they're next in the championship next season. Um, <laughs> it, okay, it's, mm. it just, I'm curious, do you think a points deduction is the best deterrent for it? Because, I mean, there's talk of the luxury tax and you, you don't want to see teams get points deducted. It's the same when teams go into administration sometimes. It's really hard to sometimes marry it up mm. with the off-the-field stuff. So, Ed, where do you kind of sit on it? I, I think a points re- deduction is the only way of dealing with it because you have to... For me, you have to affect the the, the status of the team. And I, I'm in tra- I was going to ask Dave what the, um, the feeling was um, with the fan base because it's, you know, similar... No, Forest have got the um, the double European um, uh, wins, but you know we are similar stature in terms of one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd agree big, with that. Ed. A bit, a bit, a big club in a bit in a big in um, in a you know a smallish city. Um, yeah, it's the only real way I think of deterring teams because if we go to the luxury tax, I'm a big NBA fan. If we go to the luxury tax um, model that they use. All it's going to do is Newcastle and Man City and Chelsea are just going to buy whoever the hell they want, which they're doing anyway, and just pay the fines. Mm. That's not going yeah. to work. Yeah. That isn't going yeah, to work for a team. Like, it's not going to work for Forest. It's not going to work for Wolves. Because no. we, we'll, be able, we'll be able to swallow some money, of course, because all football, t- all football clubs are backed by people mm. with deep pockets. But it's the only deterrent i think the, my my biggest issue with it it seems like they're rolling the dice to come up with the points deduction yeah yeah what i think, lands I think on. yeah i think ed the, the feeling around the city ground at the time was I, well that monday that we had the four taken off a statement came out of out of nottingham forest which i i i did a couple of pods at the point that, that the uh the points were taken off. I was caught on the hop. I had to do, I had to do a podcast from my car in B&Q car park near where I live, right? Because it was like hot off the presses. And um, I kind of remember getting home and they said, oh, Nottingham Forest have issued a statement. And I'm like, oh, crikey, don't say the wrong thing. Don't pour, you know, more oil on the fire. But the statement actually was, I thought was really, really good. Uh, it, it almost kind of said, we're 86 clubs over here and we're sort of declaring war on you six over there. Right. And it, it was saying that, like, you know, it, it's Marinakis's money. He promised Steve Cooper and he promised the people of Nottingham on the balcony of the council house in Market Square in Nottingham the day after the, uh, the the playoff win at Wembley. I'll give you what you want to be competitive in this league. And he had ambitions to want to take on the big guns. And um, and that that's what he did. And it's kind of like, well, it, it is his money. It's like if I if, mm. if during the course of this show I want to like get on my phone and go on Amazon and buy something that I fancy, so what? So I I I understand you know how a lot of our supporters were you know that, what, what a lot of them are saying. Um, well, what about this lot over here? They've got 115. We've got one. Mm. That lot over there have got two, mainly based around the stadium. You know what, the 115. What are you going to do about them? That and that's a, a lot of it. The, the elephant in the room is a sky blue one all the time. Mm. And um, I just think, I mean, to be honest with you, lads, it's it, it it's a fact of football in life at the moment. I wish it weren't. Um, but it just makes me. I kind of like. I get. I, I, I'm 60. I feel like 70 sometimes talking about it. You know. So um, it, it's all very. It's all very wearisome, to be honest. Mm. But um... it, I mean, I think it similar to VAR in a way um, that I think the expectation of FFP and PSR, whatever, like you know, a, any kind of greater oversight of, of financial conduct by clubs. I think the aim was for it would impact the bigger clubs more and make it more even playing field. And same with like VAR, but we all thought, oh, it's going to mean more goals. It's going to mean that we're not going to have all this disputed stuff. And all it's meant is similar to those, actually that greater insights made it a lot harder for, you know, that, you know, to make, you know, go- goals and stuff like that happen as, you know, we saw, or even like, you know, talk about games last week and whatever um, with, with uh, Yates getting punched. 
And Do you know what, lads? I mean, really, what we're talking about here, this game on Saturday, is a game probably between the two teams who have the longest lists of perceived injustices mm. against them this season. <laughs> Isn't it? Oh yeah. It, it's yeah, yeah. it's the VAR VAR hates Derby because VAR yeah. hates Nottingham Forest, and from the very first game of the season, it's hated Wolverhampton Wanderers. You know what I mean? It, it has been awful for us, us us this season, and it's not even itself out as far as I'm aware in terms of same for us. You know, and it and it's so frustrating, and you know, same with you know the financial regulations, and I get it to a degree that yeah you just don't, you don't want another lead situation but at the same time everything else has kind of been running such a way that they've kind of stopped it that you can't necessarily have another man city which is sort of not to the same degree but actually for not even for us to be competitive they needed to spend money did mm. they necessarily go about it in the right way, bringing in 75 mm. players? Yeah, yeah. Agreed. <laughs> um, but I, I, I can see the logic. And to be fair, Wolves had the same thing when Foson took over, if you remember, Josh. But, you know, I, I, I mean, they've barely recovered now. The finances on paper. But we had to invest in that team. It was fucking <laughs> dire, were The it? thing for me with the like, points up and things is, like, obviously last summer, it's well documented, Wolves had to sell. Everything was basically for sale, wasn't it? And mm. Wolves have been okay. VAR was BS to say at ten points, but it's, they've been vindicated from a financial point of view of doing that wholesale. And I don't think it's fair that other teams can break rules and things like that, and then True. not have deductions. You know, mm. and that that was the from a Wolves point of view. I had to look at it because why should we bust our balls selling players? Taking you know deals on players that maybe we shouldn't have. Selling you know, for example, selling Collins. Premier League rival, young defender. You think, what's the logic in selling him? We sold him. You know what I mean? So I didn't feel it was very mm. fair that Wolves should get punished for selling under 50 million quid's worth of players, you know, and mm. other teams can get away with it. But I do understand the frustration from Everton and Forest fans' point of view because to have what they have with Man City, Chelsea, and then you look, all you're trying to do is be competitive in a league that's impossible to be competitive in without spending yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. I think probably less so with Everton, but also, I guess, to a bit. But it's kind of shown whatever kind of ta- tactics is the wrong kind of term, but whatever they're trying to implement in the clubs, not massively working anyway. And so I kind of get it that there's no kind of strategy or implementation because of, you know, even with your six point deduction, you still be in and around the relegation zone. Mm. And it's still, you know, it, 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 it's such a tough one to kind of marry yeah, up, really. Um, I mean, let, let's, I guess, before we go on to, you know, this weekend as well, let's have a quick flashback to the last game uh, we played, in which feels like a lifetime, it feels like a lifetime <laughs> ago. And it, in, my, in my head, I was thinking of the last game at the City Ground where Podent scored and it, it, it was a proper melting pot game where it did just feel mm. like it was gonna blow like oh, despite the fact that it's not as i say there is a bit of a rivalry there it felt genuinely that next level heated which you don't tend to get in the premier league yeah i had that mm. bit of snotter, you know, wasn't it really yeah it's not like everyone was, yeah it's not I mean, a great a term jersey. there was the back <laughs> earlier in the season spitter a spitter not a snotter it, yeah. it, it, <laughs> Sorry, sorry. Anyway, that's fair enough, that's Allegedly, fair enough. call it an eerie, like, like, whatever. Out of any of, out of any call it of even for Gibbs being a toss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but I was going to say the game this season. I mean, one one draw. Kuna scores for us. Uh, Truffalo um, for yourselves. It mm. feels like it kind of just came and went. It didn't have quite as much yeah. fan uh, about it. Not, not for us, it didn't, because oh. it was preceded by Fulham five, Nottingham Forest that that midweek yeah. previously, yeah. which I went to. I mean, I mean, to be honest, I've only missed, I've only missed one game this season, um, which was the FA Cup replay at Blackpool, because that was the night my mum passed and mm. I was with her, right? So, but that game at Wolves, uh, the game at Molyneux early in the season, where um, it was probably a fair result, I think. Yeah, um, was for 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 me and for us, just to not get beat after Fulham was a thing. So you know, and I we went there, 
Um, and I, the, the way Wolves were playing at the time, the way we played at, at Fulham, I thought, oh, we, if we get out anything out of Molyneux, I'll be happy. Um, and uh, so it was a, for me. It was a, it was a, it was a big result not to get beat because Fulham. Me personally, Fulham wasn't the worst of the season. Brighton away was the worst of the season for me. You know, after the perceived anger of, of what had gone on with the Liverpool game, where we played well mm. and got beat at the end, and there was the Tierney stuff, and then they went to Brighton and showed no reaction whatsoever. They were they were a, a bit of a disgrace, really. I don't like saying that about our lads because I think our lads are a good bunch of lads, but that that was a very poor performance. So the the one one at Wolves for me was a really good result. Like you know, it, it was they got something. Didn't matter how they got it, they got something. Do you know what I mean? Um, and especially the way Wolves were playing, Wolves wasn't there. I like yeah. Cooper, but it was like if he lost against us, a bit like back yeah. in uh, Paul Pardons, it was a lot of like because I thought after the yeah. game, the way Cooper kind of come across, it looked to me it was almost his last game. I don't know how many he lasted, lasted after that, maybe one or two games. Uh, he went, he went after what he what he did, Josh. He went after the we played Tottenham on a Friday night, Tottenham went down to 10. And it looked like Tottenham had 20 on the field and Forrest had four on the field. They were that yeah. poor. Yeah, and like I say, it wasn't too long after that, was it? Um, mm. It was in the December and I know it was Nuno's first game Bournemouth just before Christmas. But I remember yeah, the it was, of, yeah. Like, yeah. if Cooper loses here, yeah, Cooper's gone sort of thing. So, because I remember yeah. at the end he come across and mm. he was very like appreciative of the away fans. And I said, I said on Twitter, I think at the time I said, that looked like Cooper's last game. That did, obviously. We, we had all, one more. We all, but you know what yeah, I mean? We all, yeah, we all thought that, Josh. In fact, <laughs> those games at the end of Steve's tenure, every one of them was kind of quite emotional. But but that was the nature of the guy himself. He He was, he, cultivated a really good bond between him and the supporters from the, you know, I don't quite think Nuno's got that yet, but Nuno's a different personality to Steve. So, you know, you take the individualities, but it did feel, I, I mean, we all felt at Fulham that 5-0 night where Forrest were truly awful. Sutton United and Forrest Green would have beaten them that night. They were that bad. It, it felt like, it, you know, so, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was always, Kind of quite emotional. We we all we, that that side bit down that, that that you know down the side of Molyneux where we all were. We we thought the same that, as you did that, that that was that. But he managed to to go on a bit longer, but not very much longer. Mm. I was saying, um, I say it's, it's it's interesting. We'll talk about I guess the walls past and presence and uh, flock forest uh, is presence in a minute. Um, in terms of I guess sort of team news, um, going into the game, um on Saturday rather frustratingly from a Forest perspective well for Wolves perspective from a Forest perspective uh, Chris Wood looks like he's going to start and <laughs> that's a goal just, there, there's I mean there's few certainties and life isn't very rare death taxes Chris Wood scoring yeah, yeah. Chris Wood <laughs> no matter who is, I'm sure he even scored for Newcastle against us he did and he only yeah. he only played about three games for them yeah. so yeah it, it's <laughs> It's a guarantee that he'll score, even if he can be, go on. He's one of those strikers that is on this ridiculous run, this eight and nine or whatever he's on. But also, mm. I wasn't surprised when he hit the post the other day because that's yeah. the kind of that's the kind of player he is. But trust me, if that was against us, Dave, he'd have hit the post. He would have hit him with the ball. <laughs> so it, it is just a given. Mm. Yeah, he's. Um, he, do you know? Do you know what, lads? I was on a pod. I think it was sometime in October, and, and they asked me about Woody, and I went, I used that <laughs> as gentle a phrase as I could come up with, which was, he's a light of former years, and have I been proved wrong? So if, if any of your, your viewers are looking in, thinking, well, is Dave Asprey any kind of guide? Think the opposite to me, and then you'll be right. <laughs> because <laughs> from that point, I mean, I looked at uh, I looked at the, just out of, out of interest before we went to Tottenham at, at the weekend, where I never thought we'd win anyway. I thought we'd always get beat there. And I looked at the the leading goal scorers, I think it's from Haaland or whoever, downwards. And Woody has the best goals per minute uh, ratio at the moment, which for a guy I was writing off earlier in the season, and to be fair, a lot of Safari supporters wrote off. He's had a second season syndrome where his second season has been far, far better than his first one, you know. So, um, I mean, I, I, you lads obviously seem to have a, developed a, a bit of a thing about him. And if that thing would carry on, on on Saturday, I'd be really happy, you know. I mean, I don't think it helps with Chris Wood, but he was constantly linked to Wolves in the mid-2010s as well. Um, right. And just Wolves would never quite, well, 
they'd never pay up. But pretty much since he... And, and I guess maybe you've got a bit of the Albion connection as well, maybe. But he just he went through a spell where he would always score against Wolves. And I know every club has them, uh, but it, with him, it, it's carried from the Championship where we wanted him to then now in the Premier League, and he still blue scores against us every time. And mm. I mean, I, I, I've got nothing against him as a player or anything like that. I wouldn't say I, I, I rate him or particularly hate him, but he just absolutely, whoever he is up against in our team, he just buries them. Um, mm. So I'm a bit... Yeah, seeing that he's going to be fit and firing, um, mm. you know, and again, looking throughout that Forest side, there's, it, it seems like Nuno seems to have got a bit more balance within the team. Um, yeah, I'd but, agree, I'd but, agree with that. I think I think the football that we're playing under Nuno is more front foot than it was under Steve. Uh, there's less of a feeling like, let's, let's, let's keep it tight. Like, we're creating more chances. I mean, um, against Fulham... Uh, 10 days ago or nine days ago, whatever it was, absolutely outstanding first half. There's as good a, a half of attacking football from Nottingham Forest as I've seen for quite a while, really. And then second half, some good game management when you know Fulham scored early to make it 3-1. Um, I think he's getting close to a settled side, which given the turnover of players, as, as has been the standing joke about us for so long, you know, and, and changing the team around it, there was far too much flux we're away from that. I think. I think what you've got on the screen there, uh, Rich. I don't think there'll be much in the way of difference from what you've got there to what will go on the field at the City Ground on uh, mm. on Saturday. I, I. The only thing I think is a lot of Forest supporters would rather Nicholas Dominguez be in there than Ryan Yates. I think. I mean, Yatesy is a grand lad. He gives the lot every week. He's a, he's Mr. Nottingham Forest. He just lives and breathes the club. And he'll always be a cult hero. But first 15 minutes at uh, Tottenham on Sunday for needless niggly, niggly fouls, a yellow card. And it, it's like, it's all a bit scruffy. And I, I think I'd rather Dominguez in there personally. The rest of it, I, I'm happy with really. Omabama Daly, I really like. I think um, yeah, he was kind of bought as a bit of an afterthought uh, on deadline day, but he looks a you know he's not he's not the full package yet, but I think he in, you know, in the fullness of time he could become a really solid citizen for Nottingham Forest. It, it, I think if we were to go down, which is still a distinct possibility, then Omabama Daly in the Championship would be a standout. You know what I mean? So I was saying that, that, that that's that's the precipice we're on. Hmm. We either stay up and that team, most of it, stays together or we go down and it's probably ripped to shreds. Do you know what I mean? Odd. just don't know. Hmm. Hmm. I say another player who um, I'm interested to see, just because he seems to have got a bit of hype on social media in the last couple of days, is uh, Murillo at centre-half, hmm. yeah, um, who, seem, who seems a fun player, which isn't yeah. necessarily always the adjective you want to describe as centre-half. <laughs> yeah, he's, he, do you know what? He came in him. I mean, he's only a baby, really. He's only twenty-one. I don't mm. think he's been playing. I oh, think he's been playing for. This is like his second professional season. Like, he, yeah, he's... it is. Yeah, yeah. He came into Corinthians, mm. and he played. I think he played thirteen games for Corinthians before we bought him. And and you know, and while our transfer policy is open to mockery, right? <laughs> some of it. Some of it's been all right. I, I, I like Callum Hudson Adoy. I think that's been an excellent signing. Three million. That's really good. Mm. This kid, from the moment this kid arrived at Forest, I don't know what they do at Wolves. When 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 our lads sign, they always have like a uh, an introductory interview. You know, welcome to the club and all this. And, and he clearly didn't speak any English, but he smiled his way through the whole of this interview. And he was like, and I just thought, what what a refreshing sort of personality. And somebody sooner or later is going to get hit with a shot that goes in from 80 yards. He tried it at Luton. Yeah. He missed by not very yeah, far. He tried, he tried it at Tottenham last week. And he, like you say, uh, Rich, he is a fun player. I mean, I, you know, I don't think he's great in the air, but on the ground, he's, he's predominantly left side. i tell you what he did do. I mean, Rodrigo Muniz came with Fulham last week and he's hot striker. He's, he's, mm. on, a, he's on a good streak. Never sighted. He, he honestly was anonymous, Rodrigo Muniz. 
And I was kind of thinking, this guy is like solved all of their Mitrovic related problems because he's been scoring goals and he looks a really good player. Murillo basically just dealt with him and um, he was never cited. So he's a work in progress. He's not he, he, like I'm Obama daily. He's, he's, uh, he's another one who's learning his way, you know, but um, yeah, he is. Uh, fun is the way to describe him, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I, he screams that he'd be needed in a back three um, and, and mm. have a couple of players around him to keep just, yeah, yeah. Just wind it in a little bit, but yeah, again, yeah. <laughs> for for you know, he's twenty one. He's played less than like fifty games or whatever. I guess yeah. from the uh, Wolves perspective, um, Josh um, Kuna's back in full training. Um, apparently, Quang's been in training today. So is Dawson. Bit of umming and ahhing over eight Nori. I mean, if eight Nori's even eighty percent, surely he He's needs to start. Too. I think the thing is, we like reading some of O'Neill said Saturday, it was a kind of a case. So, without Nuri, do they play him for the rest of the game when they bought him off and kind of risk losing him for weeks or kind of risk the game Saturday to try and keep him mm-hmm. for, fit for the rest of the season? Which you know what would have happened if he'd have stayed on. He'd have got, we'd have lost oh, and he'd have got even worse injury, yeah. wouldn't it? So, it's just one of them. I think, obviously, Cooney, if he's fit enough to play, he's got to start. Um, Obviously, again, I, I don't think you, you risk Quang probably because I just, you know, you, you can just see what's going to happen, can't you? If we, if we bring if we play them all, they're all going to get injured. Um, and I think the team like generally picks itself. Obviously, I, I got back. I didn't go Saturday. I was uh, busy. I had some else on, but like I've read from Gully, a lot of good things about Doyle playing slightly further forward. So mm. maybe you do the same. Maybe it's like Cunha, Sarabia, Doyle. You know, maybe don't risk Quang or it depends on if you like, knew he's fit or whatever. Um, so it'd be maybe nice to see that again because obviously, like I say, first half, everyone was saying, Oh, well, we played the second half, half, it didn't get go that well, but it looks like it was better Doyle out there than Lamina. Um, so I think, but it picks itself, doesn't it? Really, maybe Dawson comes back in as well for that aerial battle against Wood because you just know Kilman's gonna shit the bed, don't you? In the air. <laughs> Poetry. <laughs> I was going to say, slightly stole my next point. Uh, in terms of, oh, well, what about Dawson? Um, no, I mean, Ed, how about you? How do you think we can line up on Saturday? I guess a lot of it is just fitness dependent on this point, isn't it? Yeah, I know we have, uh, you know, 5,000 injuries, don't we, at the moment? And <laughs> most teams are most teams are battling with the fact that we're playing sort of 100 mini games now and, and everything else mm. with with all the VAR stuff that we won't talk about. But my only concern with Dawson is that those wingers, and I don't know if you want to flash the screen back up, Rich, but Ilanga, I mean, mm. he's rapid mm-hmm. and Dawson Dawson isn't. And uh, my concern is and Ilanga tends to be one of those wingers that will bang it into the top corner, one in every 10, but, you know, that that doesn't necessarily mean that he won't. Hudson Adoy is a um is useful you know there's a lot of chopping and change between that front three and we know the quality gibbs white has and how he's grown at forest there's Mm -hmm. a lot of chances for him to pull the strings and get the ball over the top of someone like dawson Mm -hmm. kilman's not slow totty's not slow um eight nori i think josh is bang on We, we have to play him i think we were all um banking on mario lamina being player of the season until eight nori's last six weeks or so and all of mm. a sudden he's making a charge for it as well. So mm. I, I we we might have to double up on that right hand side if it is a langer on the right and have maybe the Higo Bueno um eight nori left side because up front we have people even younger than Josh up front that are barely <laughs> out of, barely out of GCSE, barely out of their GCSEs, <laughs> let alone um, playing football. So um, we, we do actually have actual children up front. So we need all, <laughs> yeah. all the help we can get, I think, to try and keep it um, keep it stable. And one thing we know about our former Lord and Saviour, Nuno, is that he will, you can almost guarantee, Dave, I don't know if you can put a bet on him never using more than 14 players. But if you can, do. Because I know the trophies, <laughs> for, I know the trophies Forest have 50 players, but Nuno will only see about 16 at most. Yeah, yeah, that's that's about right, actually, Ed. Yeah, uh, he there are some who've come in, you know, loans and and things, and 
and you think, well, when are these going to guys going to get a game? Yeah. But he seems to have. I, I mean, the thing is, you, you can look at it. The, the other side of it is like there was so much chopping and changing for so long, you know. And if he has, if he has, if he has kind of focused it into like fourteen or fifteen, then that maybe you know, all managers get to the point where you think, yeah, I can trust this guy. I can't trust that guy. Whatever, you know. So he, um, I mean, he's had he's had some criticism for some of his substitutions recently, but. I think people get hung up on substitutions. You know, it's like it, 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 to judge a manager on his substitutions. I mean, if we're judging him on what he did against Fulham last week or what he did against Manchester United and Newcastle at Christmas, no problem at all. You know, I, uh, it, it's. I mean, that's it. that's the thing. It's you know, I mean, what what reception is he going to get at Molyneux? I'd I'd imagine he get a good reception, wouldn't he? For sure, hundred yeah. percent. There's no reason not yeah. to. It's a little bit like, don't wrong. I think, like even when he was at Spurs and he come, like it, you know, coincidentally it was his first away game for Spurs and he come and he's, yeah. just, he's always going to get a good reception. I think. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's, he's yeah. He, he was such a big part of such a special time, you know. And I, yeah. It, sometimes it disappoints me. I see like a lot of stuff on social media, um, and. A lot of fans seem to want to disc- try and discredit some of the things he's done for us, and I, I think that's really harsh. And I yeah. see, similarly, it sounds a bit strange. I see a little bit with like Cooper and stuff like that. There's a lot of yeah. Cooper had the intangibles, didn't he? He had that bond yeah. with the fans that you can't. He it's not easy to replicate. And yeah. I think, and I, I was actually quite a big fan of Cooper. I thought he's, yeah. Obviously, I, I don't think the last twelve months have done him a lot of favour, but I thought he did to get Forest promoted and then keep Forest up with yeah. some of the you know, the disarray that the club was in. I think he's yeah. he was a fantastic manager. I think he kind of gets a bad rap for this season. You know, I think yeah. that Luton game was a big turning point, wasn't it? Getting 2-0 up yeah. and then drawing to each at home. But yeah. Uh, yeah, he'll always get a good reception. I think he'd be... Yeah. It, it were, do, you know, do you know what, do you know what Josh, actually? That, it, I mean, it's amazing how a certain football, uh, certain football supporters develop, like, you know, <laughs> selective amnesia or you know yeah, they kind of lose, lose their long-term memories i mean for me mate uh i remember we when we were in the championship we played cardiff city on a sunday lost two uh, two one played middlesbrough on a wednesday night and lost two nil which is when hewton went and you kind of thought my, my club is just gonna just wither away on the vine and die less than eight months later I, I'm experiencing something that, you know, I've lived through a lot of football. I thought I would never ever experience. Experience, that was a yeah. victory at Wembley, and it's a it's a miracle. It's not a miracle like Clough winning the European Cup twice or winning leagues with Derby and Forest, right? That is a miracle. He's the greatest, right? It's a different team, sort of, yeah, and absolutely. in the modern what? game as well to do that in the and then to stay up. I thought that yeah. was just so impressive. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm yeah. a big. Look, I'm a big advocate of Cooper, and not. Yeah. Whatever and a good guy as well, a gentleman, a gentleman yeah. who had mm, time know. for everybody. I, I know, I know people who do loads of things around Nottingham Forest. I know our some lads who do our banner displays in the fours of Gary Baldy, and they've met him, and he was, he's an absolute gentleman. You know, there was, there was some of our support were like, you know, scathing, and you know, almost like they, 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 so they, they kind of didn't like that he was being held up. I mean, the thing was he. He, he did, like I said, he cultivated this relationship with yeah. the supporters. He went out of his way, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and I'm a big, yeah. I'm a big ad. I love managers who kind of embrace the other side of the game, the fans and stuff like that. And that's what Nuno yeah. did with Wolves, yeah. and that's what O'Neill's done, and that's why, yeah, like we love managers so much. You know, I think obviously yeah. we all love the players, they love that great on the pitch, but the managers met the difference, didn't it? And, and that's what yeah. Nuno did for us, and that's what Cooper did at Forest. And Gary, I have actual. Real experience of Gary O'Neill, right? Um, early in the season, I think it might be the third weekend of the season, we were at Old Trafford on a Saturday where we lost 3 2. And you lads were at Goodison where you won 1 0, mm-hmm. the big lad yeah. scored with a header. And on the way back from Old Trafford, we were soaked. We got soaked walking from our Old Trafford to where we parked our car in Manchester. On the way back, we stopped at Nutsford Services, right? Went into Nutsford Services and basically it was. Uh, 30% red shirts, Nottingham Forest, and 70% old goal, Wolves, right? And we were sat there, me and, me and the lads I went to the match with, and 
I was just kind of looking around the place. All these Wolves lads sat with us. They're all in good spirits because they won, you know, and they were saying, oh, you know, Rashford shouldn't have had that penalty and all this kind of stuff, which is right. And then out, out of nowhere, Gary O'Neill walked into nuts for services, right? Now, my first thought is, Gary, why aren't you on the bus with the lads? Yeah. <laughs> you, you just you just won at Goodison, mate. Are you upset with them? And you've like, as it's so a Gary O'Neill came in and I'm watching him because I'm quite good with names and faces and that. And I'm thinking, oh, this lot over here, the Wolves lot, are they going to notice him, right? And at first he didn't. And what Gary O'Neill did, he came in, turned out he was with his wife and his daughter and they, they were having Burger King or something. But when Gary came in, he walked through it. He went to the loo, right? Nobody noticed. As soon as he came out of the loo, one Wolves lad spotted him. And the next minute, all the Wolves boys are up around him. And Gary O'Neill had time for everybody. He was an absolute gentleman. I, I'm a Forest supporter, right? But I like good people in football. Doesn't matter who they, you know, yeah. I can't hate somebody just to get associated with another club. I, I don't hate Derby County. I'm supposed to, but I don't. I can't. I can't have that level of hate in my life, right? And I watched Gary O'Neill. And every Wolves fan I've, I've met since, I've said to him, you've got yourself a good man. He's a good man. He's a good coach. He's he's far more intelligent than a lot of people give him credit for. And let me tell you on this show now, I believe Wolverhampton Wanderers, from the perceptions of them at the start of the season, and yet £150 million worth of sales and all that, from where they were viewed at the start of the season, before the season started, to where they are now, I have Wolverhampton Wanderers as the biggest overachievers this season. No, because most easy. people had them going down. Right, so I, I'm a Forest fan admiring what this guy's doing. I think I, I, there was a thing he did. He was, I tell you what, when he was on Monday Night Football and he explained yeah. how he, he coached, I thought it was fantastic. My old man, who he passed in October, I think about, he was on, Gary O'Neill was on about a fortnight, three weeks before my dad passed away. And my dad was a proper football man, right? And he said, he, I bet him, I, I was his personal carer at the end, yeah, because he, he went very well. And he said, did you see Gary O'Neill on Monday Night Football last night? I said, I did, Dad, huh? My dad goes, He's all there, him, isn't he? And I went, yeah, he is. And I think what Gary's done, uh, you know, given as well, he's kind of cocked a snook at what happened at Bournemouth. I, I think I think he's been really, really good for And this is why I think it's a really difficult game for us at the weekend. I really do. Mm. I mean, he, he's, as, as Josh said, and, and, and to be fair, same with Nuno, is, yeah, they, they've made that connection with the fans in a, in a few different ways, but it's mm. underpinned by actually you can see how good they are with the players and implementing yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. That's and true. it was really kind of clear. I mean, from that, you know, United, Man United game, first game of the season, how we mm. just came out and it was like, hang on, this this isn't the side we were watching under Lopetegui last season. And yeah. he'd been yeah, with yeah. four days. And like, you know, obviously, yeah, we, <laughs> we had the drama with AR, uh, but Shock. to see his genuine passion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I mean, you could just copy and paste that sentence in probably about every six <laughs> games, in it. Um, yeah. but actually, um, to, to see him here, it just him absolutely just a hundred percent all in on stuff like that. It, it makes such yeah. a difference, and yeah. you know when you can see that the team is playing differently to how they were before, and it, mm. because of them, you, you you buy into them. So if they, you know, maybe they don't. Gary O'Neill hasn't got it right quite a number of times this season but mm -hmm. you know the good ones you give the longest lease to sometimes and yeah. it's it's hard at the end you know when, when you know it, same with Cooper like no one can tell me from looking at his CV that he is not a very highly astute coach Where, whether he's able whether Cooper was a, is able to do it Premier League or he's not quite there or he hasn't didn't have the infrastructure like he's clearly a good coach and will get picked mm. up next season um, yeah, there's no, yeah. no question of it. And, you know, it'll be the same with O'Neill, the same with, uh, and, and similar with Nuno, that they've kind of shown that they, they have that bit about them. I mean, in, in terms of that, I mean, yeah, you're right. Uh, he'll get a good reception. I don't think it's going to be like a, a overall fanfare or whatever with Nuno. I guess the more curious reaction is for Gibbs White um, <laughs> reaction, because I, I am in a very small minority here. That I don't have a huge amount of dislike for Morgan Gibbs White, and I don't, mm. don't, I don't quite get it. I, I, it's I, I don't either, Rich. But I'm also not on social media, which is where I think he pissed most of the fans off. So I because like I'm not on, I, I don't get it. 
Yeah, mm. it's easier to stomach a bit now because that last season was in that relegation dogfight, and it was like, you know what I mean? It was like, oh, you just want every bit of mm. edge you can get, you know. And this season, mm. like, we're in the table, gives what's playing for the team in 16th, 17th. It don't really bother me, yeah. you know. And I, the thing no. is, I think when you boil it down, both clubs had a fantastic deal. Everyone won in that deal. Gibbs White got yeah. the move he wanted. Wolves got very good money for a player with very limited Premier League experience. And Forrest got, and Cooper at the time, got his man that he really don't yeah, so yeah. desperately crave. Yeah. So everyone yeah. won. You know, I think sometimes in the tribalism of football, people can get caught out of that. And as much as like, you know, I take the piss and stuff like that, he is, he's a good player and he'll, he'll play for yeah. you and stuff like that. And it's a bit yeah. as well because he's one of our own, but it, it mm. happens that's football, into. Yeah, I love him. I mean, I'm where I live. I'm about nine miles from Stafford, so he kind of feels like even more one of our own because he's from Stafford. Hmm. But um, you know, he, <laughs> I guess you for you lads, it was coloured by that quarter final at our place and the penalty Did shootout. It, it, you know, how, which, which actually, honest. which actually on the night to me the funniest thing wasn't so much what Morgan did; it was what Jack Colback did with the next penalty. Because you remember, Jack came up, we're like, oh, crikey, what's Jack doing taking a penalty? Mm. Jack scored it, turned to run away, and then went back and stood in front of the Wolves fans. And, <laughs> and, and, and it's just become a thing, hasn't it? That could, yeah, and, it has. But, I, I mean, fortunately, at least us four are just about adult enough to enjoy the pantomime of it and not mm. to take it too yeah. seriously <laughs> with it. And yeah. I think that's sort of my thing. It's like, yeah, I... I, I you know, personally, I think Wolves did him a bit of an injustice in terms of, you know, they kind of, because they pulled him in, they pulled him out. We didn't quite get it right. And actually, ultimately, he wanted first team football in the Premier League. He'd shown he could do it in patches. He'd proven himself to be the best championship player of the season before, mm. um, arguably. Mm. And yeah, with, and, 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 it, and it worked for Wolves' finances to, to to yeah. to move him on and stuff like that, but you're right. Yeah. He it, it, he's a sort of player where it's a bit of a win win because if you do go down, if he stays loyal and stays with you, you you've got arguably the best player in the league. If he moves, think, then yeah. you, you're gonna get you're gonna get your return on him because he's he, he's shown enough in a lower yeah. half prem team that that he's more than capable. I think if we were to go down, I think he would go. I think if we if we go down, we lose Morgan. We I think we may end up losing Morgan anyway because I think there's another PSR hurdle to be yeah down the line. So I I'm I love the guy. I love the lad. What I love about him is that he came and he basically stuck the the fee that was paid for him in his mind and said they paid a lot of money for me. I need to take on all this responsibility. Sometimes with Morg, I feel like I'd love to put my arm around and say, kidder, just take your time, chill out, let some of the others do it. You don't have to do everything. But it's almost like he he I mean he's he's been he's been made captain. Steve's last great move was to make him captain. Hmm. It's almost like, yeah, what I love about him, he never he he wants to have the ball all the time. I mean, a couple of weeks ago against Palace, we were awful first half, truly dreadful. Um, and uh, second half, he got changed a bit, and Morgan dropped deeper, and he basically was he was playing just in front of our back four, and he ran the game. It was like he he was quarterbacking, and it's it's like hey, give me the ball, give me the ball, and if I've got a kid in my team that's doing that, I've got myself a player. Morgan, do you want to do as much as you can for Nottingham Forest? Yes, please. Good lad, on you go. I'd rather that. I'd rather in that have that. You know, I mean. When he was with Blades, we played them four times that season. And he was the best player in either side in all four of those games. Yeah. And 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 the key thing was that he'd been at Swansea with Steve in a, in an injury curtailed loan. So as 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 the lads have said, it, it it's a win. I, I love him, but I, I'm pretty sure that we're not gonna have him for much longer. Yeah, I feel like he's on he's <sighs> It, it, for me, it's almost like is he done? It's whether he'll have done enough to like what tier of move is he going to get? Because mm, obviously, like mm. Johnson went to Spurs, mm. which is kind of lit. That's a very big leapfrog in terms yeah, yeah. of you know up ten space in the league. And mm. what I think you you wouldn't want him to get into a situation is 
him to effectively go to you know Leeds. Yeah. You know, they go so you know, like I mean yeah. it actually can't be get, can he get a move or can one of those teams, let's say West Ham or Palace yeah. or you know that mid table team if 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 they are if they've got Brighton, that, Newcastle. Like, yeah, just like just that, somewhat yeah. just someone that bit higher up where he's not kind mm. of looking at you know, not playing for a team who are looking over their shoulder every week. Mm. Um, and it, it, I guess that's where the next six games are going to be really important. And it yeah. might be that, you know, he plays himself well enough to take that decision out of your hands. Who knows? But, um, yeah. you know, let, if we have a quick look at the league table, you know, it is it is still very tight in a few different places, particularly in that bottom <laughs> bottom yeah. five. Uh, cool. Sorry. And it's, uh, it's, it's very much looking between, you know, one of, you know, a... a Sheffield United are, are all but down, barring a genuine miracle. Burnley are only three points above them, but six points off even Luton um, and, mm. and and Forest. So, it with six games to go, it, it's unlikely that Burnley can kind of claw themselves out. And so it's effectively one space between Luton, Forest, Everton, and maybe um, maybe Brentford. But at this mm-hmm. stage, again, if you know, if I'm saying if six points is too many, is four at the same time? I mean, Ed, who do you think is going to be that um, final bottom team? I've got a feeling it's going to be the three that are in there, but I have a sneaking suspicion that Brentford will be underneath Everton and Forest. I think they're um, barring Villa doing Villa things last week and, and giving them uh, mm-hmm. a point out of nowhere. They're a very, for me, a un, very unimpressive team. Um, I'm not impressed by Brentford. I think they've flattered to deceive and have done a few times and have relied on Ivan Tony to to bail them out more than more than they should have done. I think they're going to be dragged into it, but I think mm. it's going to be Luton, just because I think there's going to be a there's going to be a class issue at some point. They've thrown away far too many points, Luton, for me. Yeah. They've thrown away as many points they might as well had of have had a points deduction they've been in really good positions in four or five games to memory and and given them away and i just think there's going to be that's going to be their downfall rather than it being um for the lack of trying and the, we've all fallen in love with losing a little bit because they've come up and tried haven't they sheffield united mm. sheffield united rug pulled from under them they had all their players sold we know that burnley have come up and people pretended for months that they were actually any good and they're awful um mm. And Luton, they've they know what they are, right? They're they're you know they're they're a jobbing boxer, aren't they? They're taking bouts and know they're gonna take a few hits on the chin, and that's what we we mm. enjoyed them. Mm. And let's not beat around the bush. Everton and Forest are only in that conversation because the suits have decided that they had points taken off them. It's been not been decided on the pitch, has it, for those two teams? No. And I think no. I think class will prevail in, in terms of. Where they are, I think Sean Dyche is a limited manager, but he knows what to do. Um, Nuno was a reason that I fell back in love with Wolves because I was really starting to not be fussed but about us before he came in. So I will always have a soft spot for him because of that. And I think Brentford, I think Palace are a very uninspiring team, but they're probably just too far ahead now when they mm. seem to be able to pick up a few draws. I think Brentford are going to be underneath Forest. Do you know, do you know what? Do you know what, Ed? Ed, it's interesting to hear you say that about Brentford, mate. I, I'm, I'm unimpressed with Brentford, but maybe not for football reasons. Uh, I went to the GTEC just after Christmas, and it was Ivan Tony's first game back, and and I have a feeling that karma is storing it up for Brentford. I mean, that night was frankly embarrassing. You know, there was this guy who'd been suspended for betting large amounts against his own club. Welcome to back as a conquering hero. I stood in the, I was in the stand thinking, hang on a minute, this guy's a miscreant. He's basically, a, uh, you know, a traitor to your club. He's been betting against you. And there were like fireworks going off and the man's back and all this kind of thing. And, and as I stood in that stadium, all I could think of is that uh, gentlemen and ladies, David Brooks has just beaten Hodgkinson lymphoma and has come back to football without any kind of fanfare whatsoever. And that is a truly heroic thing. Ivan Tony's no hero. And if karma has any say in the matter, Brentford will be dragged down. And I'm with you, I'm with you, Ed. Villa last week want their backsides kicking, really, for allowing that to happen. Every, I mean? every, every week for me, that they can 
<laughs> I, I, I have more of an issue with them than I do the Albion, so um, that's that's. that's, 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 that's I say it's an issue. Of, oh, you want too? Probably said you want too many teams to go down. <laughs> is it? Is, it yeah. is, is, is the crux of it? I mean, looking at the games of the weekend, Josh. Um, we've got uh, Newcastle Spurs as the uh, early kickoff. Brentford Sheffield United. So again. Interesting one down there, Burnley versus Brighton, Man City, Luton, um, of course, Forest v Wolves, Bournemouth, Man United v um, so the late afternoon kickoff Saturday. Then you've got uh, Liverpool Palace, West Ham, Fulham, Arsenal, uh, Villa, and then Chelsea, Everton. Any of those sticking out to you as um, potentially interesting ones? Some good games, isn't there? Obviously, mm-hmm. Arsenal, Villa could have, could have a big impact on the title race. Um, obviously, the other two total contenders have got pretty straightforward tasks. City got Luton, Liverpool have got Palace, you know, without being mega disrespectful, but that's kind of how it is. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it's just just as a few, it's getting to the busiest end of the season, though, isn't it? And it's where mm-hmm. the every point's going to start to matter, especially with point deductions and, mm-hmm. and things like that. Um, it's just it's almost more or less thankful that we're not having this conversation and this isn't to. Six a relegation, six point for Wolves, and you know mm. whoever wins makes a big difference in the season. You know, I, as a Wolves fan, I'm just thankful with kind of the expectation burden on the season that that's we're not in that. Um, no. So you know, like I say, some some good games. I think Forest Wolves will, will be a good game. You know, I'll just help. We've got a couple of our first team players back that'll make a big mm. difference, mm. Um, and, and, and things like. Obviously, you just look at how tight it is at the bottom of the table. I didn't realise. Forest and Luton on equal amount of points. You know, yeah. I didn't realise it was that it was literally that tight down there. So it's just one of them, isn't it? I think uh if this is the running, this is this is it now. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I mean I think I think Arsenal beat Villa at the weekend. Yeah, I, I, I we I mean I was on I was on um twelfth man just before I came on this show and we were talking about the, the title contenders and I think for a while I thought Liverpool were gonna give Klopp the leaving present. But I'm not so sure now because Liverpool displayed a distinct lack of killer instinct at Old Trafford last week. I mean, utterly mesmerised the home team, you know. Mm. I, I don't think with Manchester City, I don't think they're as good this season as they were last season because Ilkay Gundogan is near to irreplaceable. And and I, with Arsenal, I've been quietly impressed with the nil nil at Manchester City if you compare it to the four nil that they took there last year. And on Saturday night, so we played on on the Sunday at Tottenham. So I, I kind of sat down to watch that on Saturday night and thought, hmm, Brighton at the Amex. They're a good side, Brighton. How good are Arsenal? And Arsenal yeah. were so professional and they they play. I actually thought they were by far the most... I know um, City played well at Palace, but uh, I thought Arsenal was so professional and solid at Brighton. Oh, it was a tremendous... Declan Rice has been a fantastic signing. The much uh, prematurely maligned Kai Havertz is now playing really, really well. And they look a good, happy bunch. I think a lot of it's based on Saliba and Gabriel. I think Saliba's been fantastic. I think they might have gone close to win, closer to winning it last year if he'd stayed fit. So, yeah, I, I, I think, I think Villa get beat. If, if Villa get anything at Arsenal, I'd be very surprised. You know, so uh, they'll probably those three will probably all win. I mean, really, pound for pound, our game is the best of the weekend. Mm. Really. Because I think it's it's some of the others are look fairly predictable, but I don't think our game is is, is all that predictable. No, I was going to say, like looking at them, it feels like they're either you know high versus low, or it's just you know Brentford versus Sheffield United, mm. which feels very dredgy. Um, mm. uh, you know, whereas ours, I think it's it's, it's going to have the right level of feistiness, the right level of. Um, mm. aptitude and hopefully it's going to be a it's going to be a good game um mm. right let's wrap this up um with a quick game of who am i i know i mean i've been so excited for this i was uh, i was up until the early hours last night um with a small 
uh, boy who decided he didn't want to do a burp for an hour and a half. Um, but whilst I was doing this, it, sorry, it, Rich, I'm it, really sorry about that, mate. I won't do it again. I know. <laughs> Look, Ed, did you not wind him properly? I, Rich? I was slapping his back. Was, <laughs> was it Josh? He looks. <laughs> While I'm drinking the Pepsi, I'll do it myself tonight. Good. <laughs> Saves me singing uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star anymore. Um, anyway, they did, but what it did do um, is it did give me a chance to think of a few interesting players. So here's what we're going to do. I've got uh, three players um, who got a connection to either and or uh, Wolves and Forest. So what I'm going to do, uh, I've got, let's see, about five clues for each one. Just chime in. You fancy a guess, and uh, we're going to see how it goes. I've uh, got a feeling I'll be sat here quiet. <laughs> no, Josh, Josh, I've, I've, pi- I've pitched it to. Uh, well, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. If not, it's going to take a clean, uh, clean sweep. Okay, so first, uh, first clue for this player is: I had more loans than appearances uh, for my first English club. Okay. Feels like the first bit on only uh, on Morgan only Gibbs White. No, I played at the 2020 Olympics. Okay, I appeared for both Wolves and Forest. Willy Bolly. No, Wolves made a 13 million pound profit on selling him. Oh, I know. Do you want the last clue? Yeah. The last clue is I have 81 career goals, according to Wikipedia. I think you're going to kick yourselves, you know. <laughs> he played I'm kind of wishing your little lad did a burp now. <laughs> yeah. Played at the Olympics in 2020. Yeah, he played twice for Wolves. Shall I reveal who it is? Mm. Oh, go on then. Oh, oh man. dear me. You know what? Oh, lads. He was absolutely he's... dross. It, it looked, honestly, at uh, both. At yeah. both. <laughs> I don't, but he sm- he just continued, like, he's still playing for Seville, still got a half yeah. decent record even this season, hit mm. double figures last season. Genuinely, I, I do not know. I think How that that thumbs up was probably the best thing you did in a forest shirt. As well. uh, <laughs> forest <laughs> when I, he, when I, we, when we I, have we have little regard for him at all. I mean, he, he fact, was a bit of a standing joke. Really, I, I mean, I was trying to pick between do I go Bonatini, do I go Rafa Um <laughs> and uh, just Eve. I mean, I, I I was still a bit kind of glad I didn't know him. Yeah, like, I'm glad I, I, glad I didn't get yeah. that it's, answer right. It it was such a such a sort of a weird time in wall. I mean, it's a yeah, it, yeah. Anyway, right, nine. yeah. He was he was number nine for two appearances, and just that, that was the only one that was in the modern era for me. You now, so we've definitely. Um, oh, okay. really uh, I was going to say, are we are we classing that as mod? <laughs> we'll, we'll see where we end up. Then, okay. So the next one, fellas, is uh, I played sixty-seven games for Wolves and Forest combined. Okay. Uh, I've played in England, Scotland, and Wales. I was born in Amsterdam in 1980. Okay. I won promotions for Premier League with Swansea. My only start under Stully Stolbacken came Doris, with... Doris De Vries. De Vries. It's the keeper in it, yeah. Yeah, got it. Josh, yeah. he's coming big. He's coming big again. I, I look. He got him from the silhouette. I, oh, reckon, no. I reckon Josh got him from the silhouette, didn't you? No, the, the promotion to the Premier League with Swansea. Yeah, Swansea. Yeah. I was going to say. I hope it's not from the silhouette because a little peek behind the curtain. That's that's actually a flipped image. So the original oh, image is actually focusing the other way. So to be fair, it is doing a very goalkeeper uh, goalkeeper mm. stance, isn't it? Looks like uh, Sarabi with the haircut. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 
he um Good I mean he, he played for about 15 times I think it was about 14 times for Wolves and you know about uh, he played basically a full season for Forest after yeah, after leaving did. Wolves and yeah, seemed to be sort of fairly yeah. well regarded but yeah his mm. time at Wolves was uh tricky we'll go for um because basically he was brought in thinking he was gonna you know start then basically didn't didn't play was backup goalkeeper played a few times at the end of our relegation season in the Premier League and then was subsequently not named starting goalkeeper for the next year until um, Carl Akimi broke his hand punching a tactics board. Um, iconic. Um, and, then, uh, and then immediately at the end of the season, Jacket went, what are you doing here, please? And so he signed on a free. Okay, uh, last but not least then. Okay. Da, 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 da. Hopefully the image won't give it away. I, I really doubt it because I had to search... I, I searched hard for this image. Okay. Um, so last one we've got is, so who is this player? I played in League One for Nottingham Forest and in the Championship for Wolves. So that sort of potentially slightly dates it. Didn't know this one. Um, I'm currently a scout at West Ham. Okay. During my career, I had loan spells at Sorrento, Barrow, Blackpool, Villa, Huddersfield, and Wolves. Marlon Harewood? No. Okay. Gediera? No, this one might give it away. Um, after scoring 68 goals for Norwich, uh, after scoring 68 goals for Norwich, I only managed to score 16 in the next nine seasons. And finally, I have Grant one. Holt. Cr- yeah. It is Grant Holt, and I'm really annoyed because the last clue was uh, was I have won the Crusher Mason Memorial <laughs> Trophy. Yeah, yeah, he was a wrestler. He, yeah. uh, he's a good lad, Grant Holt, actually. He, uh, <laughs> but he reminds me of the worst night in Nottingham Forest history, bar none, which was our five-two home playoff defeat against Yeovil. Oh. Which is the worst result in our history, you know. So, God, I can't believe I've got one right. What the hell is Grant Holton Sorrento? Why is Grant Holton Sorrento? Yeah, I know. He was on holiday. Yeah, he was on holiday and played five aside, didn't he? That's what that was. You know what? I, booze I, cruise or something. I, I was really anxious about uh, doing it because I don't think he technically. Pa- I don't think he technically played for them. I think he was just there, according to the right. great people at Wikipedia, and I'm genuinely anxious it's not right, and we're just going to blame Wikipedia for it, okay? Yeah. Um, because <laughs> Dave, Dave all, got it anyway, Rich, so it's fine. It, it's fine. And it, that, that was for Clint. I don't know what that before. says about me. Maybe I need to get more of a life or get out of the house <laughs> a bit. You know what I mean? To be fair, <laughs> like when I was uh, when I was looking through it, there is a really interesting mix of Wolves and Forest players, and not just mm. in the last sort of. Um, decade yeah. or so and you know you say the likes of Guardiola who you know didn't play an awful lot at Wolves has this iconic status and oh, you know ah, it just mm. exactly just again he was fun and that's mm. what you want in players isn't it yeah. so you know yeah. someone who can just absolutely smash the living daylights out of a ball um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. a, so I've got a lot of time for him right um before we wrap up then do you want to do a quick score prediction for Saturday yeah, we don't have a choice to be honest. So, uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, That's we do it anyway. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it like it's not in my running order. Um, yeah. Right, we'll, we'll wrap it up quickly. So, um, you know what? I'm going to go first, and I'm going to go for a one-one draw. I think it's going to be one where it, it is blood thunder. We battle each other out, but I think Wolves won't quite have enough fitness to in their players to to change things enough to to get a result. Um, Ed, how about you? Uh, I'm going to go against the Chris Wood curse and I'm going to say it's going to be nil-nil. I don't trust any of our children to score. Not guaranteed Ryan Ed nor he's going to play, so I'm going, to, I'm going as a, a nil-nil. Forrest will be happy with the point. Wolves will walk away with the point and we'll all just go away and be last on match of the day. Perfect. <laughs> Love it. It could be a 5 all draw and I still think we'll be last on match of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's get another conspiracy going. It's better than talking about VAR. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure Dave would say, "Yeah, no, I'm sure we're always last on match of the day." Yeah, we are. We are. <laughs> we are. I was like, you or us, isn't it? We're, you know, yeah. like not, not exactly 
Forest and Wolves and sort of never ever flavours of the month, are they? You know, it, like, Ian, no. Ian, Wright, Ian Wright was lighting a candle for us last week. He actually physically apologised, didn't he? About yeah. the, um, the decision, bless him. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dave. How about you? Where where are you sort of sitting on the score? Well, um, I think it'll be tight. I mean, head says it'll be tight. I mean, you know, last year one nil, one one, one one early the season. The cup court, the the Carabao court final was one one effectively. I mean, there's a lot between the two teams. If you go on the league table, then Wolves come and win, really. Um, but then at the same time, as you three lads have alluded to, and I I took note of last week. From what Gary was saying, there's there's a lot of um, stuff on the treatment table at Molyneux at the moment. So, um, I head, I think, airs towards a one-one draw. But Hart says we sneak it one-nil, and I and I think the home advantage could play into it. Now, I mean, for me, after what happened against Fulham, and actually what happened for about half an hour at Tottenham last week, where I mean, of our remaining fixtures, that one at Tottenham. And Manchester City, nah, I've just cast away, lost them, forget them. And and it wasn't at Tottenham, it wasn't completely plain sailing for Tottenham. Um, you know, and you had to make some substitutions. So that was there was some positives to take out of it for Forrest. But I have a right now to expect what happened against Fulham. You've shown me what you can do. You've displayed your wares to me. I want that against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Mm. Because, you know. Fulham are in the middle, done fantastically well to be there. Wolves are in the middle, done fantastically well to be there. There's, you know, not that much difference in the the current April the 11th status of Fulham and Wolverhampton Wanderers. So I have a right to say to Forrest, you did it then last week against Fulham, do it against this lot this week. Whether that comes to pass or not is another matter. But I just think... <laughs> the thing is, every time I'm positive, we get beat. <laughs> right. Nice I've got thing. this. I've got so right. I, I've, I've just finished another show. Uh, and they said, What do you think? And I said, uh, Well, I'm, I fancy us, but that's winning. And then I went, I oh, know, no, Wolves will win easy. So I'm going to say to you, lads, Forest and Wolves three. <laughs> and actually, Ed, you know what? Ed, um, Josh's point about a 5 5 draw, if you consider. That the last four fixtures between these two clubs, there's been nothing between them, and no. they've all been relatively. Yeah, there's been some feeling there. I mean, there was a couple of sendings off at the City Ground last year, mm. which for me was for me was the weirdest game I've been to because I was in a box. Normally, I sit in the Trenton right behind the goal, but I was in a corporate box last year. So when Brennan put put us in front through Jose Sar's legs. There was this muffled sound and I didn't like it. And then obviously I saw Pedensi's goal and then there was all this other business going on. You know, so it's a weird game, but there's been nothing between it. And they've all been relatively last on match of the day type games. Maybe this one will be a corker and it'll be something like, you know, a 5-4 win either way or something. I don't know, but um, would I be happy with the point? I don't know. No, I, I don't think I would. I want a win. We need a win. I mean, yeah. The, the, the truth of the matter is, lads, uh, uh, and I might be repeating myself, is we, we had the four deducted, but we've chucked away four against Luton and we chucked away two against Burnley. You mm. know what I mean? So um, I, there's all well and good saying, well, you know, they've thrown points deduction at us and VAR and all that. And I'm like, well, you know, Forrest are culpable a bit as well. Because what I, what I won't ever do, and I know some, you know, you get, you get, you get supporters of clubs on, and my club's brilliant because I love them. I don't do that. I want to be objective about my club. I want to be reasonable. I want people to look at me as a representative of our fan base. Well, that guy's fair. You know, I, I love football, right? The game is always bigger than the individual club. There's so much about Wolverhampton Wanderers as I've grown up that I think is fantastic, right? I mean, I'll tell you what, I went there last year, the 1 0 game. I came out of the ground and obviously, def, you know, disappointed because Brennan uh, missed the penalty and whatever else and all this business. And I walked out the ground uh, around the back and I had one of the greatest moments of my life because I got I got the chance to tell uh, hello to Robert Plant mm. of, Led, of Led Zeppelin. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, 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 I like an, an icon of my life. So, you know, um, I think uh, let's just hope we have a really good game of football. It's been such a pleasure coming on and talking to you, lads. It's been a real treat. Thank you for having me on. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure, Dave. And hopefully, say, it's a good game. 
Um, but yeah. More hopefully, Wolves win. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, understandable, mate. It's all understandable. Yeah, yeah. I, look, I completely agree. The, the love you have for Forest, I, I, I resonate with it so much. I just hope you don't win this week. Um, yeah. but, <laughs> no, but, do you know what? Do you know what, Rich? I always say that, and then uh, and people go, "Oh, good old day." I hope you get yeah. beat. <laughs> you know, right. right. I, 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 I mean, I've realised that I don't think I've ever predicted Wolves to lose. I, I, I do a golf crook, so I, whether it's on this show or, uh, you know, I kind of get invited on some scope. Usually, I've, I've realised, say, if it's going to be, if I say, oh, it's going to be a draw, I reckon, it means I think we're actually going to lose this one. I just don't want to admit it to myself. <laughs> but anyway, um, we will. Can I just say before we go, I'm just looking. Have you seen the Liverpool score, gents? Yeah, three now. Oh, losing. It's three yeah. now. Yeah. You said earlier, Josh, it was two, but um, yeah, Leverkusen, yeah, Leverkusen just scored as well. They just scored, yeah, yeah. yeah. So interesting. That's, that's, mm. I don't think they're going to get back from that. I don't think. No, I think no. It's no. to go away as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 even if they're a big it, European it's... Liverpool night, you just know it's going to friggin' happen there, though. Yeah. Yeah, they'll get. <laughs> well, they'll still, you know, not yeah. that they ever mention it. Yeah, no, no. no. Three nil down yeah. playing against the Italian side. Oh, I've seen the script already. Friggin' hell, <laughs> cops last season. Oh, it just, just bores you, know. It just bores you. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, I'd still quite like it if Wolves piss on their chips last game of the season. Not, oh, I, I yeah. think that's the dream, but I don't know some of the times that's not going to happen. No, I mean, even if it's like their three point, you know, there's a three point margin, just just that, yeah, we'll. We'll still annoy him enough, but uh, yeah, well, we'll see how Wolves get on against Forest um, at Saturday, three o'clock. And we will, of course, be here to react to it on Sunday evening. Um, make sure you keep up to date with all things Wolves and Wolves Fancast at Wolves Fancast here, there, everywhere, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube. And if you have not already, make sure you like, share and subscribe as well. Um, so until next time, it's goodbye from Dave. Goodbye. It's goodbye from Ed. See you later, guys. It's goodbye from Josh. Goodbye, come on, you all. Let's have a cheeky little three point Saturday. <laughs> Both <laughs> Both a little, a little bit of that to celebrate with you, Junior. <laughs> I've just turned these off so I can't hear you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, if it was me, I'd be accidentally. Maximum volume. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. And it's goodbye for me. We'll see you next time, everyone.